Hello and welcome back to Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. I'm going to make a classic Scottish soup called Cocker Leaky Chicken and Leeks and I will run you through the ingredients now. Okay, this is cocker leaky soup, which is chicken and leeks. It's a Scottish dish and it's Burns Night coming up soon. So you can see me pointing to a range of vegetables on there. That was prunes and whiskey. Now they were essential, whiskey being very Scottish. And the prunes, believe it or not, make this lovely. The vegetables are for, half of them are for making the stock and the other half are going to be in the finished broth. So what you saw me doing there is I just selected the bottom half of the celery roughly chop them up one of the carrots some of the onions some of the garlic the leeks you can see are missing the tops because the tops have already been cut up in cold water just getting rid of any bits of grit and sand or dirt that get stuck in there always a good idea to wash your leeks people The herbs I'm using for the stock are woody, hardy herbs. I've got some bay leaf, sage, rosemary, thyme. You choose. Up to you. I've got some parsley to go in and finish the soup. What I'm doing here is I'm just checking for bits of grit in the rest of the leeks. I've given them a quick rinse and back over. And I'm going to take a little bit more time here because these vegetables are going to be in the finished broth. So you want to make sure they're nice and evenly sliced and diced. So you'll have a next minute or so of me cutting up some vegetables and I'll come back to you in a minute when that's done. You don't have to peel the celery, but I like to because I think it could be a bit stringy, those bits in the broth at the end. But don't worry, all the bits I've peeled off will go in the stock pot anyway, so it won't be wasted. So all the vegetables prepared, ready to go, now for the chicken. What I'll do is I'll share a link in the description for a full video where I show you how to joint and pan roast the chicken. Because I like to speed this up because the video would be a bit long otherwise. But basically what I'm doing is taking off the legs, the breasts, the carcass will go in a stock pot and all the little extremities, the ends of the wings and where the feet join on to the legs etc. Once that's done, we can get on with making the stock. 
if you don't want to faff around making a stock, what you can do is either buy a chicken stock or you can use a stock cube. I won't tell anyone. Use half the amount of vegetables and you've basically got that process done. So you just got to then brown your chicken legs and add the vegetables in the stock and cook it away. But here's, if for those that want to make the stock, I put the carcass in a pan, nice big pan, covered with cold water, some peppercorns, ingo de bay leaves, and the rest of the mirepoix. That wants about an hour and a half to two hours. You want to get the flavor out of this, otherwise there's no point. So this you would do way ahead of time, the rest of it, you, well, you can just have a lazy afternoon just slowly doing this stuff, or sit down and watch the telly, up to you. The bacon, I've got about four rashers here. This is just a smoked back bacon. Any bacon you want is fine, but raw bacon, not ham, okay? So this is a while later, the stock's been simmering away nicely. I'm now gonna to start to brown the chicken. I've kept the skin on the chicken because it's got a lot of flavor in it and it has fat in it. So the end result will mean your broth will, won't be a clear. It's not gonna be anything like a consomme. It's gonna be a bit cloudy, but it's gonna be lush because of the chicken skin. So anyway, nice hot pan, bit of oil. Give these a couple of minutes on that side to brown, then turn it over and we'll brown the other side. So it's time to get the chicken out. Got to act quickly here. What I should have done was turn the heat off completely because the pan is catching. That's called a fond when it all sticks to the bottom and that is flavor. The one part of there you can see, I'm not gonna hide it, was getting a bit dark. So I had to act quickly, quick, get the bacon in. And then I want to deglaze this very quickly with the whiskey. Usually when I use a spirit to wine, if I can, I flambe it because I'm a boy and I like fire. But in this case, that pan was so hot if I'd have set fire to it, I think the flames would have licked the ceiling and I would have been in a world of trouble. So, you don't have to. The whiskey goes in any second now, come on. And then the, the heat will burn that alcohol off anyway and this is gonna simmer for another 45 minutes to an hour anyway. So you do not need to flambe. That's nicely deglazed. That's the nice vegetables, the finished vegetables. Now what you should do here now is gently nestle the chicken on the top of the vegetables. Obviously give the vegetables a stir. Gently place them on the top and then we'll add the stock. Or you can just dump the chicken in. Doesn't really make much difference, really. Up to you. So basically now we're gonna get the stock on top of this. So that is now had an hour and a half to two hours. I've got my conical strainer there. Carefully do this, this piping hot soup here, uh, stock, so it's not gonna take long. Pass that through there. And as I say, give that 45 minutes to simmer gently. That will cook all the chicken on the bone completely through and then we're gonna take the chicken out. So once you get all the chicken out, plus that little bit of skin, leave that to cool down for a minute, and then you're gonna strip all the chicken off the bones. The prunes can go in the broth now. 
I encourage you to use a few more than I did. I was very conservative because I didn't think it would be very nice. But after having the soup, I wish I'd put more in. The quantities are completely up to you, of course. You are the cook. So just let that simmer away while you prepare the rest of the chicken. Take your time over this. It's easy with the breast, you just take the skin off, but with the legs, you've got to make sure there's quite a lot of gristle and connective tissue and bits of bone, so take your time. The last thing you want while you're eating this delicious broth is to have bits of gristle in your mouth. It'll put you off. You could just use all breast if you like, up to you. But it doesn't have the flavour that the legs carry. They are so much nicer, in my opinion. So there we are, all the meat chopped up. What I should have done at this stage was just put all the meat back in the soup and the parsley and just dished it up like a really rustic dish. But I was thinking, no, I'm a chef. I'm going to make this look really restauranty. And to be honest with you, I didn't pull it off. So I would say, don't worry about this bit. What I'm doing basically is ladling in some of the broth and then I'm going to try to very elegantly display some of the chicken meat in the middle of the bowl they just look rubbish but the flavor oh it was amazing anyway so burns night is nearly on us if you want to have a go at this if you want to get all scottish definitely give this a go i'm actually thinking i might have a go at doing cranachan in the next couple of weeks which is the very famous scottish dessert that uses everything that is scottish raspberries oats honey whiskey all that stuff it's very nice but anyway this was lovely i'm definitely going to make it again let me know how you get on leave me some comments and uh, anyway, that's this one over thank you for watching please check me out in the next video coming really soon bye